Hello, welcome to Prejim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 46. In this part, we will see how to use enum in an example and the advantages of doing so. In part 45, we have seen, I mean, we have written a very simple program. There were a set of related numbers basically to describe 0 for unknown, 1 for male, and 2 for female and the program was less readable there because we are using these integers okay how do i know what does one mean is mark male or female unless and until i drag down and look at the documentation i will not know that okay now this is a very simple program we just have one you know uh gender which is using set of related numbers but in reality in your application there will be hundreds and hundreds of related numbers you know and it becomes extremely complex if you have to rely on these integral numbers you know, your program becomes unreadable it becomes unmaintainable over a period of time okay now how do we make this readable to make this readable you can make use of enums okay so let's see how to replace that now, just like how I have created a class using the class keyword, to create an enum, you use the enum keyword. And by the way, enums are value types. We will be talking about all the other concepts related to enums in a later session. But in this session, we will look at an example of using enums and replace these re you know, integer-related numbers using that enum. Okay, so let's create an enum for gender. And to do that, we use the enum keyword, so public enum, and let's call that as gender. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, my enum is going to be starting with unknown, and then male, and then female. Okay, all we have done here is created these three entries. So create an enum using the enum keyword, and then unknown, male, female so we are done creating the enum now let's see how to use this enum in our sample program okay so now in this program what you can basically do is okay before we modify this method we'll actually modify the customer class itself now instead of saying the customer class gender as integer we will say this is going to be of type gender all right that's the first change and the next change is in this method. Okay, so instead of passing in integer, we will pass in the enum now, gender. And then this is switching on the gender type enum. Okay, so now here instead of saying zero, what you can basically do is you can use your gender and say gender dot unknown. Now look at it, it becomes more readable. Okay, this is whatever code that goes in here is for unknown gender initially it was one two and zero zero means what is it for male or female or for unknown we didn't have that readability there and similarly for case one we will say gender dot male and look at this the best part is you get intellisense as well so male and similarly gender dot female and we will leave the default there Okay, so this is the second change. And the third change is in your customer object itself. Now, we know that in this customer object, this gender is actually an enum. And look at this. Okay, what is Mark's gender? If he is a male, instead of, okay, what is the value for male? Is it 1, 0, 2, or 3, or 4? Instead of referring back to the values, what you can do, okay, it uses gender. So, gender dot male. Okay, and if you hover your mouse over that, you will say customer dot gender, you know, property is of type gender. You can see that on the left hand side. Similarly, if I hover over here, my customer dot name property is of string type. Gender is of type, you know, gender enum. Now, if you're not sure, you can actually right click, go to definition. Okay, gender, look at this. Name is of type string. Gender is of type gender enum. And if you want to look at the values, you can just click, you know, right click, go to definition, and you can see unknown male, female. Okay, so now let's go and change it here. So Mary is a female. So I can say gender dot female. And here Sam, gender is unknown. So we'll say gender dot unknown. And by the way, look at this. Just like how we have 
for example in our you know this is the symbol for an enum it's like a postcard or a postcard uh, this is a symbol for enum just keep that in the back of your mind just by looking at you know when you press dot the intel in the intelligence you can actually tell by the symbol is it a class is it an interface or is it an enum all right so we are done now so our program is actually more readable okay now by looking at this you can say okay mark is male mary is female and sam's gender is unknown and even your switch statement here is now more readable okay now if we run the program the output doesn't change in any way except that we have restructured our program using enums which make this which made this program more readable and more maintainable even if your application if the complexity of your application grows and if you keep adding more enums you know it is still going to be more readable and more maintainable and actually within the .NET framework itself there are several enums for example if you look at the system.io namespace within system.io namespace you have you know for example file share let's say for example the program has already opened a file and if you want to open the file again uh, what kind of you know share permissions you want to have okay do you want to open it in read only mode read write or write mode if these are just numbers then it becomes extremely complex to remember okay what is it for read and what is the number for write or what is the number for delete okay so using enums definitely makes your program more readable okay now we have just spoken about why enums are required and what are the problems enums solve you know it makes your program more readable and more maintainable but we haven't spoken the concepts related to enums which we will actually be doing in the next session okay we will be talking about you know the different things that you can do you know converting an enum into an underlying type and similarly converting the underlying types back to enums you know trying to assign the values of one enum to another enum listing all the values of an enum etc which we'll be doing in the next session on this slide you can find resources for asp.net and c sharp interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day